Welcome to the BDA webcast here about the International Conference. Uh, it's hosted by Donna Stevens and produced by Aaron Smith. Donna, how are we today? Do you want to tell us about what we're going to hear about today? Yes, fine. Thanks, Aaron. Um, I'd like to first say welcome to everybody, and it's great that you're going to join us for this webinar, a very short webinar about the International Conference. And um, as well as me, Donna Stevenson, as Aaron says, I'm the International Conference Coordinator. I'm joined by four very important individuals who've also played and continue to play a very important role within this special conference. This is the BDA's 10th International Conference and so it's a very special anniversary for us. Our conference is hosted by Oxford this time around on the 10th and the 12th of March this year, 2016. On to our panel then. I'm joined today by Professor Victor Van Dahl, Professor Steve Chin, Professor Julia Carroll and Dr Kate Saunders. And I wonder if we can start with the panel, introducing themselves and maybe sharing some details about their links to the International Conference. So if we start with Victor, who's our current IC Chair. Victor, if I hand over to you and you'd like to introduce yourself and talk about your role this time around for the International Conference. Yes, hello, I'm Victor Van Dahl. I'm currently a Professor of Education at Agile University. And I obtained my PhD from the Free University in Amsterdam um, about the same time as the first international conference was held. So about 25, 27 years ago. Um, my thesis was on the use of computers in um, youngsters with dyslexia. And ever since I have been in the field of literacy research. Um, at the moment, Lovely. I'm conducting and research. Steve? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Chin. Um, I attended the first um, international conference a long, long time ago, chaired the third one. I ran a specialist, founded and ran a specialist school for dyslexics for 19 years, worked in America working with dyslexics, and uh, my main interest is maths, hence chairing the Dyscalculia Committee. And I continue to do that work. Um, currently, I'm a visiting professor at the University of Derby. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. And then if we pass across to Julia. Hi there. Uh, I'm a professor in child development and education at Coventry University. I chaired the international conference in 2014. Um, before that, I will, I've been on the conference committee uh, for the conferences in 2011 and 2008 and and now for this one in 2016 um, and before that as a student I um, was a steward uh, as a PhD student for one of the earlier conferences I think. I'm not sure which one but uh, around 2000. Brilliant, thanks Julia and finally Kate Hello, I'm Dr. Kate Saunders. I'm the Chief Executive of the British Dyslexia Association and my links to the International Conference um, go back about 30 years um, when I was um, studying as a special needs teacher, dyslexia specialist teacher, psychologist in the dyslexia field. Um, and the conference provides a wonderful opportunity for professionals within the field to learn about the latest research um, and also to liaise with other colleagues in the field. Often we can be quite isolated um, as individual workers and it's a fantastic opportunity to have that melting pot of discussion with other people. Thank you, Kate. Um, thanks to the panel for your comments. If we move on then, and we've already started to talk about it a little bit, I think. It's the history of the conference. It's got a very rich heritage. And Steve, I know that you were a conference chair for the third international conference. And I wonder if you'd like to talk about the kind of heritage of the event and maybe share some of your memories. Sure, very happy to. In fact, I can combine this with um do you want me to combine the heritage and the third conference in this chat now? Yes, that's fine. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Well, if I talk about the first conference, because that, that sets the heritage, um, that was in 1989, and it was really one of Marion Welshman, uh, an incredibly important name in the history of dyslexia 
in the UK who was behind this conference. She was often, not often, sometimes called by those that um, didn't like dyslexia, Fussy Mum from Bath, which is why <laughs> Bath was the first, um, the first venue of the Bath College hosted it. Alan Giles, a very good, an old friend of the BDA, uh, organized it. And they had an amazing turnout of speakers. Marion's ambition was to bring international speakers so we could all hear them. You have to remember back then, we didn't really know as much in the UK as we do now, obviously. And a lot of our um, knowledge has come from abroad. And this linking with abroad. And among the, the great people that spoke at that conference was Richard Maisland, Yaroslav Sturmer, Sylvia Richardson, all keynote speakers, very well known, speaking to this 400 people. Amazing that they got so many for that first conference. But it was also a chance for lots of new names to start and introduce themselves. So people that you will know of, like Gavin Reed, Bevy Hornsby, great names, John Stein, Tim Miles, Maggie Snowling, Charles Hume, Arian van der Lage, all getting a chance to get into this marvelous network and international field of dyslexia. Just a great opportunity. Um, and Fawcett and Nicholson introduced automaticity at a particular conference. Um, and in fact, I spoke. So that was, I think, my first big conference in, in many ways. So it was great. But it was Marion's vision to, to give people the opportunity to hear notable speakers from around the world and, um, and to get people, new people in. Great networking, as Kate has already um, talked about. So by the second conference, I was on the organizing committee. That was chaired by Harry Chasty and running Oxford. So we're going back to Oxford um, this year. And that had, again, just a mixture of people you, you just wanted to meet. William Tunmer from New Zealand, Ingvar Lundberg, one of the driest human men I've ever met, but so intellectual. Marilyn Yeager Adams from the States. Nata Gulandris, Usha Goswami, Charles Hume, lots of top uh, people. The first conference produced proceedings. These are pre-computer days, so they were uh, paper, and uh, everybody was represented. By the time we got to the third, second and third conference, proper books and uh, um, editing down some of the speakers, but great. And brings me to, uh, we used to have really, still hopefully do, great speakers at our dinner. And we've had Sir Jackie Stewart. And um, one year we had Sir Steve Redgrave, who was just fantastic, such a wonderful chap. So just had time for everybody. And at the end of the conference, after he'd done his speech, we like to give something. What do you give to someone who's got so many gold medals and so many accolades? So we decided we would produce a hardback version, hardcover version of the conference proceedings, because this is original. No one else has got such a thing. And we gave it to him, and he smiled and said, well, I've read three books in my life. I don't think this is going to be the fourth. So, but we meant well, and it was a unique, it was a unique gift, and he, and he was so humorous in the way he dealt with that. But the conferences are great for networking, great for meeting people. How else could I have met people like Ingvar, Young, Ingvar Lundberg? Um, how else could I have got a, uh, that close relationship with Tim and Elaine Miles? It's just a privilege to be there. It's a privilege to listen to the new speakers, a privilege to listen to these world-recognized experts. So um, long may the conference continue to provide this amazing opportunity for so many people. Thank you, Steve. That's a, a real good insight. And me being involved in the last three, it's really nice to hear kind of the heritage um, of the whole event and it kind of emphasises the importance of the conference. I wonder then if the rest of the panel would like to share some of their thoughts on why the conference is so important. Victor, if we come to you, um, if you'd like to 
talk about why you think the conference is so important and why it's great um, for people to come and join us and see all these fantastic speakers and so on. Uh, yes, I think that the uh, 10th International Conference is um, a unique uh, opportunity to uh, reflect on what has been achieved in the past. But unfortunately, uh, less money is available now for prevention and treatment of learning disabilities, so we must even work harder and look into the future, how we can do that and how we can do that much more efficiently. Great, thank you Victor. Julia? I think um, the British Dyslexia International Conference is always really important because as um, Kate and Steve have highlighted, it's a great opportunity for uh, professionals working in the field to hear from um, very high profile academics and it's also a great opportunity for academics to hear the responses of, of people working in the field and to get the get that um, interaction between the two at a really high level and to hear all about all aspects of dyslexia so from the um, social aspects to the brain and genetic aspects it's really wide-ranging um, but all focusing on dyslexia so it's, it's a really lovely opportunity to, to get so many different points of view about dyslexia. Thank you and Kate? So I think that for professionals and researchers within the field it's a marvellous opportunity to extend your knowledge base um, and as professionals what we try to do is we take the research and we try to use it to develop our professional practice. So there are certain things that the academics can do for example longitudinal studies of children at high risk of dyslexia for example that Maggie Stoney has been, Stoning has been looking at um, looking at the, the multiple risk factors or the sensitivity of rhythmic structure to the developmental phonological skills that, that Usha Goswami is going to be talking about um, or the genetic research that um, Professor Elena Grigorenko from uh, Yale University is going to talk about at the conference. These are the sorts of things that as practitioners we want to know about, we want to know what the impact of these things are because it helps to inform our practice and everybody in the field at the end of the day is there to, for the benefit of dyslexic individuals to try to help and assist dyslexic individuals to improve their life chances and, and having this understanding is a really essential bedrock um, of the way that we use evidence-based uh, material to inform the way that we help these individuals. Um, and for me, it's such an inspiration as well to meet practitioners from and researchers from all around the world to see how, for example, things like um, uh, Dissexual Awareness, Dissexual Awareness Week, let's say, is being celebrated all around the world um, by different different um, people in, in completely different circumstances but all dealing with this same cluster of difficulties um, and uh, building our understanding of the co-occurring difficulties that we see in the, the children that we work with that we need to be able to uh, help them with as well um, and, and I think that it gives um, individuals who attend the conference a great sense of being part of something bigger or being part of a global movement and a global understanding um, and this is very energizing um, and very inspiring and I think it spurs us on to do more and, and, and greater things. Um, so I think it's absolutely essential to recharge our batteries in that way. Brilliant, thanks Kate. And I think what everybody's just been talking about um, is a fantastic backdrop really to why we have the conference and why it's so important and this particular 10th anniversary conference is a real milestone also. So if we move on then to look at the speakers this time around, of course, we've got lots of fantastic speakers all across the three-day conference. These are our keynote speakers, and we heard Steve earlier talk about keynotes from previous international conferences. But for IC 2016, we have um, Professor Susan Gathercall, Professor Julia Carroll, Professor Deirdre Martin, Professor Tom Nicholson on Thursday. On the Friday, we have Professor Don Compton, Professor Elena Grigorenko, Professor Karen Landl, Professor Peter de Jong, and then on Saturday, 
Professor Maggie Snowling, Professor Ushika Swami, and of course Professor Victor Vandal, our chair. And I wonder if the panel would, if we go round again and you talk maybe about a few of those talks, obviously they're all fantastic, but if you go around and maybe highlight a few of particular interest to you, and um, Julia and um, Victor, you're not allowed to pick yourselves, so if you pick <laughs> Other, <laughs> if you pick other speakers, please. I knew you would anyway. I'm really teasing. So if we start maybe with Victor, who would who do you think is a particular interest this year, 2016? Yeah, well, um, we need to uh, do justice to all. I, I think we we got a, an excellent lineup. But I would like to mention um, the topic of comorbidity, which is dealt with by um, Professor Gadako and Professor Lando. And I would also like to mention um, Tom Nicholson's talk because there is um, he, he he really goes back to the basics uh, and and looks into how we best teach uh, phonological awareness. And finally, you know there is a lot of debate around in the world of dyslexia, and I think the talk by Peter Dion will be very interesting. He will talk about diagnosis of dyslexia. Brilliant. Thanks, Victor. And Steve, what about you? Well, I shall go and listen to Professor Gaswami because she spoke at the conference I chaired back in, in whenever it was, 1994, so I shall be there. Likewise, I want to listen to the comorbidity because obviously dyscalculia is my big interest and Karen Landell will be an essential for me to listen to on that aspect. And um, I shall go and listen to uh, Julia and Victor, of course. But Maggie Snowling, <laughs> Maggie Snowling is always just wonderful to listen to, and uh, I won't miss the chance to hear her. Brilliant, thanks, Steve. Um, Julia, uh, I'm I'm also really looking forward to hearing. Uh, Maggie speak. Uh, she was my PhD supervisor, so I've heard her speak several times, but I know that she's always excellent. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing Peter de Jong, who's um, maybe one of the more up-and-coming of the speakers, but again, I've seen him speak several times, and he he does excellent research, and he's very good at explaining in, a, in an accessible way. Uh, and finally, I'm particularly looking forward to hearing from Elena Grigorenko, who's uh, been doing some very interesting and quite controversial work, I think, um, and uh, also has a, a lot of background in genetics and the genetics of dyslexia, and I think that would be really interesting to hear from her. Yes, brilliant. Thanks, Julia. And Kate? So I, I will mention, because they're too modest to, the work of uh, Professor Vandal um, to do with orthographic learning, which I think will be very interesting, and also Professor Julia Carroll on um, morphological knowledge. Um, and uh, we are also very privileged to have at our um, international conference um, various uh, talks uh, from members of our dyslexia committees, so um, to do with uh, dyscalculia, to do with the um, comorbid difficulties, but also um, our music committee, for example, which was very well received at the last international conference, um, talking about the role, uh, the difficulties for dyslexia to learn music, but also potential benefits um, of musical um, uh, learning. Um, so I think that there are many, many interesting um, speakers, I'm actually delighted um, that what we have here in our keynote speakers is a, a, a very strong line of professors and I'd like to, to um, congratulate Professor Julia Carroll on her recent appointment. Um, it's always a great joy to me um, that we have so many people who are being appropriately academically recognized for their work in this field. Um, and this is something which has emerged actually pretty much along the same timeline as the international conference um, over uh, uh, those years. And it is of itself a mark of the increased awareness of the importance of this field and of academic research within it. So I think it's, it's going to be a very exciting event to attend um, and uh, I know that the people who come from 
every continent in the world uh, derive a great deal of, of information, knowledge, pleasure um, and inspiration from it. Um, and so I would like to thank all of our speakers and everybody who's going to be attending for, for taking part. Thank you, Kate. Um, and thank you to the panel for sharing your thoughts there. As Kate quite rightly says... Donna, Donna, um, oh, Donna sorry, can I Victor? say one more thing? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, um, I, I, I would uh, like to draw your attention to two things. We also have Professor Martin on the program, and I think this is very relevant because she will talk about uh, great linguistic diversity we have in the country these days and how education is still monolingual and how we can accommodate for uh, children with a different um, um, native language um, and how we can help them in case they have trouble in uh, learning to read and write. Brilliant. The second Thank thing you. is that um, we, uh, I, I would like to mention is that we have received lots of very good contributions for uh, spoken research papers, for posters, for symposia and for uh, workshops. And I definitely have already made my list and there are lots of interesting things to go to. Yes, thank you. And um, for those people who've joined our webinar to listen to the discussion, um, please do visit the International Conference website, which you'll see now on the slide, bdainternationalconference.org.uk. And beyond the keynote speakers that we've just been talking about, as Kate and Victor quite rightly say, we have a very packed full programme covering all the various aspects to do with dyslexia, co-occurring issues and beyond, and very much academics and practitioners. Um, as Victor says, there'll be posters, we have exhibitors also, um, and also the Lord Mayor of Oxford will be joining us. So it's a fantastic three days. You can attend for the whole event or choose a day that you prefer based on the talks that you'll, you'll see if you visit the, the website and go to the section on the programme as well. So, uh, first of all, I'd say a big thank you to the panel. It's been a really interesting discussion. And um, you'll see on the slide in front of you some of the details for the conference itself. As Steve said, we return to Oxford, so Oxford hosts us the King Centre on the 10th to the 12th of March. Please do visit our website bdainternationalconference.org.uk for more information about the conference itself. Beyond that, please feel free to contact me, Donna Stevenson. My email address is there, Donna S at bdadyslexia.org.uk. I'm more than willing, me and my team, to help answer any queries or anything that you'd like to check out about the conference. Um, thank you again to Victor, Steve, Julia and Kate. And Here's to a fantastic 10th International Conference. Thank you very much, Donna. Thank you. Great. Thank you.